Hello everyone. Uh I know I'm a bit I know I'm a bit uh overdue on my last video. It's been like three months, but I'm back. Uh this time without music. So we're doing the coil gun tutorial once again. So I'll be showing you how to wire your coil guns and rail guns and what other whatever uh, uh, turrets you happen to be using in barrel trauma. Updated again because you know, those new guns, well, I mean, the new guns came out, like, months ago, but whatever. <clears throat> so, we're going to start off with the basics, and those basics is power, alright? As most submarine editors know, you have to power out your reactor and set it up to your junction boxes. What I'm using right now is what's called a daisy chain, where I basically make all the uh, junction boxes one big line. You know, they transfer power to each other in a line, rather than one single junction box dispersing to everything else it is a line that's what i've done so why do we need power good question i know you didn't ask that but whatever um see coil guns and rail guns and whatever other turrets you have to be using aren't just gonna shoot themselves okay they aren't gonna power themselves either you need to actually give them power all right so uh but also before you do that you make sure you know what you're doing you make sure the right loader is being used with the right gun so, we're going to start with the coil gun here. Here we have a coil gun. This, yeah, coil gun. Uh, this right here is a rail gun. And this right here is a turret hardpoint. I'll explain what this does in a little bit. Um, but we're going to go back to the coil gun. So, as you can see here, there's a small, subtle green line that connects this coil gun to this big rectangle. This rectangle is called a coil gun loader. What you do with this, when you're in-game, you click on it, all right, and you'll see uh, this little space. Just pretend this isn't here, right? You'll see this little space. And you put ammo in it. Coil gun ammunition box is what we're using now. This is just the default ammo, everyday, standard, normal ammo. You know, it gets the job done. All right. And to send, to make sure that this ammo is going to the right gun, what you need to do, click on the loader. Make sure you click on it. Don't press E. All right, click with your mouse, left mouse. You click on it, and you'll see this white outline, and you'll see a little menu here. All right, the white outline will tell you which loader you're on. What you do is you hold space, and then you click on the device that you want to link. Um, you'll know it's linked because you'll see this whole little green line here. This green line means that this device has been linked. Um, now, on my sub, the guns are a bit up far apart, so it's quite easy to tell if they're linked to the right gun, but, you know, who knows? Some people build subs with very close together guns and a lot of links. So, make sure you know where your links are going. In this case, I know that my coil gun loader is connected to the coil gun. Now, what? Let's let's say in the rare instance you accidentally connected to uh something that like a different gun, like a rail gun. Instead, it will be linked, but the line will be red, meaning that it will now. Yes, it is linked here, but it will ignore that link. That link is completely ignored, and nothing will happen. So. It doesn't matter how many times you link this to a different gun, that different gun will not use coil gun ammo if it is not a coil gun. Now that we've got linking down for the coil gun, now we're going to head over to the rail gun, which is this thing. The rail gun, little fun fact trivia thing, uh, is the largest gun in the game, or the largest submarine turret in the game. Uh, the smallest one, I don't remember, but that's out of the subject. We're going to continue the tutorial. Now this right here is a railgun loader. A railgun loader is a little bit different. Instead of putting a box like every other gun, see, because with the pulse, with the pulse laser, um, the chain gun and the coil gun, you just put like an ammunition box near. Railgun is different. Instead, you put five individual rail shells or railgun shells inside the loader. The railgun shells, you'll see this little like, um, you'll see this little rectangle at the bottom with like gray stripes in it. That means it's empty. Now what you can do with this. For this example, I'm going to be using, uh, not fuel rods, uh, but C4. There we go, C4 block. All right, what you do with these shells, it, it, by the way, these are normal railgun shells. You put an explosive in it. So I'm going to put a C4 block in each of them. And now the railgun shells will explode. Because normally, these railgun shells, when fired out of a railgun, would just shoot, pierce the target, and then just keep moving. However, when they're loaded with explosive, once they hurt, once once they hit the first target, they will blow up. So explosive railguns uh, are very effective against armored enemies like Molochs and uh, end worms. Uh, so yeah, that's the railgun ammo. That's the railgun loader. 
And just like the coil gun, you hold space, you left click on the railgun, and you'll see this little green line here, meaning that it's linked. Now we're going to go ahead and get on the turret hard point. This one's a bit weird. Um, if you are building a submarine designed to play in missions, don't bother placing down the hard point. Just don't even bother. The reason why is because the hard point is strictly for campaign mode only. The reason why? Um, well, the hard point acts as like a base or a foundation for a new turret. Because in campaign mode, which is what the hard point is used in, you can go up to a submarine uh, like manufacturer or builder, upgrader, whoever they happen to be. You can go up to them and request that they build a gun. All right, so they can build a new gun on this turret hard point right here. And you will now have your new gun here. So the turret hard point will also link to a base. Uh, and you can see this right here. It's called a loader base. All right, turret hard point, loader base. You do the exact same thing with a railgun and uh, coil gun. You just hold left click and you click, or you hold space and you left click on the turret hard point. Just like everything else. Now, now we've got the ammo linked. We have the ammo linked, but we still don't have power and we don't really have a way to control or see what the what the guns see. Well, we're going to go to power first. So you might have noticed this little subtle device right here. So subtle out of the way, just here, device. Uh, and this right here is called a super capacitor. Some people pronounce it differently. That's just how I pronounce it. And when you press E on it, you'll see with, with wiring mode on, you press E on it. Um, you'll see a bunch of little circles and a bunch of text. Um, now to a new submarine builder, this is going to be very confusing. They won't know what any of this does. Well, don't worry. Right now, you only need to concern yourself with power in and power out. That is the only ones, uh, only little nodes that you need to concern yourself with. Now over here on the right, you'll see the supercapacitor settings. This right here is just like normal stuff. Every single device and item and anything in the game that can be interacted with has this menu right here. So don't even bother checking out this menu. What you need to check out is the power container menu. This one is special because it applies to the supercapacitor. Here you'll see a bunch of stuff, um, a bunch of different things. And what we're going to go ahead and concern ourselves with is max output, capacity, charge, recharge speed, or max recharge speed and recharge speed. That's all we need to concern ourselves with. So the max output, um, I have already changed this. This is not the default um, value. The default value, I believe, is 20. Wait, no, I'm wrong. Whoops. No, actually, this is a default. Uh, max output, you don't you concern yourself with this. It's just the uh, how much kilowatts it can put out. That's just the how much its limit kilowatts it can put out. Sorry about that. Mistakes are made. What you, uh, what I'm talking about is actually the capacity, not the max output. Sorry, <laughs> the capacity is what I'm talking about. The capacity is how much power the supercapacitor can hold uh, in kilowatts. By the way, uh, so you can see the maximum. Uh, you can see the description here. The maximum capacity of the device kilowatts uh, times minutes. For example, a value of a thousand meters of device can uh, output of hundred kilowatts of power for ten minutes. Or a thousand kilowatts for one minute. So yeah, right now the capacity is twenty. Uh, so I usually just consider this just twenty charge. That's what I usually used to call it. Now let's see charge. Charge here is the current amount of charge. Um, so on the supercapacitor, you'll see or supercapacitor, you'll see this little green bar right here. That is how much charge it has. So when you press press E on it, you'll see a recharge rate charge right here. This is how much power it has. This right here, 20 out of 20 kilowatts per minute, uh, 100%. The second 20 is the maximum charge, as you can see here, capacity. And the first 20 is the charge. Pretty simple. And I'll show this off. If we go here, turn it to 30, we'll see that turn it to 30, because that's now the new charge. All right. So that's the supercapacitor. The rest of the settings, um, they're pretty normal. Max recharge speed is the uh, how fast, the, or the limit to how fast this device can charge. The recharge speed is how fast it, uh, it's. Um, the recharge speed is how fast it can charge. Uh, the recharge speed in the menu is not this. By the way, it is not this. That's actually recharge speed, not recharge rate. Recharge rate and recharge speed are different. Now we're gonna go ahead and get to power. How do we power this thing? Well, because right now it has a certain amount of power, but when it loses that power, it won't get it back. So how do we give it back its power? How? Do, excuse me. How do we get its power back? Well, you go to your device, or uh, your wire mode, 
you click a wire any wire doesn't matter i usually use red to signify power and you'll see this little like marker grabber thing you hear all right you grab the golden circle and you move it all the way up to power in once you'll see like a little green aura around the power in you let go it is now connected so for this tutorial i'm not gonna really even bother being neat uh, i'm gonna drag this wire to a junction box that has space like this one or not like this one yeah and we're gonna drag this power uh this, this little wire onto the power node in the junction box so you see the junction box is giving the super capacitor power because the wire is connected to power in. This is imperative that you connect it to power in because if you connect the power out, then the, then the super capacitor will be powering the junction box. You need to make sure that the junction box is powering the super capacitor. Next, we're gonna go power out and we're gonna connect this power out to three different things. You'll never guess what they are. It's the guns. So you connect them all to power in. Like so. Turd hard points are included, by the way. All right, now we have all the guns and the suppressor wired. Uh, so they now have all power. So do they work now? No, no. We still need to find out how to control them and also see what they see. Well, that's also quite simple, but the controls don't need power, believe it or not. Yep, that's right. You control them through the periscope. And periscopes do not require power. And if the coil gun or rail gun or whatever you have to be using, if they're also out of power, you are still able to use the periscope and move them around. Even if the sub is off, like the reactor is offline, and there's no power being distributed, you can still use the periscope and still move the guns. I know, crazy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so, what we're going to do, we're going to go to a periscope. All right, we're going to grab a wire, preferably blue, that's what I used. All right, we're going to take the wire and we're going to put it to position out. All right, next, make sure this periscope, you know which gun this periscope is supposed to go to. My, I put my periscope to show the base. Or, whew, man, I can't talk today. I put the uh, periscope in front of the loader. So that way I know which gun it's supposed to go to. So this is supposed to go to the coil gun. So the wire is connected to position out. So we're going to move this wire all the way up to the coil gun and remove this to position in. Now that we have it in position in, uh, we're going to do the next step, which is trigger. All right. We need to find out how to get the gun to fire, right? Well, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to grab a wire. We're going to put it onto trigger in. We're going to move this all the way back down to the periscope and connect it to trigger out. Uh, now, for those who are still wondering um, what each of these do, position out means uh, whatever this, uh, whenever, whatever this periscope happens to be connected to, um, your camera will be moved to that thing, assuming it is compatible, like a camera or a, a turret. Trigger out means that every time you send out a trigger signal from the periscope, it will send that trigger signal to whatever happens to be intaking the trigger, which is our coil down here. So in a nutshell, whenever we get onto the periscope, once we left click on this periscope in game, our camera will be moved to this coil gun. And whenever we left click while using the periscope, the coil gun will fire, assuming it has power and ammo. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our railgun here. We're going to take our position out. Ooh, whoops. We're going to take the position out, move them up to the railgun, and go to position in. Very simple. Um, all Every turret in the game is basically the exact same in their wiring. And uh, as you can probably tell, I already... Oh yeah, I already wired the hardpoint. Hardpoint does the exact same stuff. Uh, position out, trigger out, etc, etc. Awesome! So, we have the power. Uh, we have the periscopes, and we have the links. Are the guns ready for use? Yes. Yes, they are. So we're going to go to test. All right, we're going to go to test. We're going to head over to the reactor and turn it on. We're going to give it a moment for the power to power up. Oh, it doesn't have a rod. Whoops. I'm supposed to be a pro here. Uh, I swear I'm a pro. I know what I'm doing. All right, there we go. So the sub is powered up. So uh, on this, this right here is connected to the hard point. And this periscope base, I cannot click on it. Uh, well, I can't click on it, but nothing will happen. E even though this periscope base is correctly identifying, connecting, uh, and correctly wired to the correct turret hard point, it will not do anything because this is not an actual periscope. It's a periscope base. Um, 
whenever you turn the turret hardpoint into a uh, into a gun in campaign mode, its linked loader base and the correctly wired periscope base will turn into the periscope and the correct loader, so that way it can use the new gun. Anyway, so we're gonna head to the coil gun. So we've correctly wired periscope, meaning that we can now access the coil gun. We are able to move the coil gun around. You'll see this little uh, heads up display on the bottom. All right, ignore everything around the screen, like this little green bar at the bottom left, chat button. You only need to concern yourself with two things on the bottom of your screen. This will apply to every single gun in the game, all turrets. Coil gun, chain gun, plasma turret, etc. etc. Or pulse laser, sorry. <laughs> so, the thing on top is your ammo. This is the ammo that you're currently using, or the ammo that is currently in the loaded, uh, or the ammo that is currently in the linked loader base. The green bullet on the bottom is how much ammo is left. So, uh, and also one more thing the green bar on the bottom is the power. This little white line, you'll see a white line at the end of this bar, it's a very subtle, uh, you might miss it, but there is a white line right here. This white line means that once this bar, um, once the the green in the bar goes down past the white, you can no longer fire the gun. Why? Well that's because this bar is actually how much power the supercapacitor is holding. Oh, wait, we're suffocating, hang on, uh, enable cheats, uh, oxygen. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to left click. You can already see some changes. The green bar has lost some of its green, and the ammo is just a little bit shorter. So, we're going to continuously fire. And you'll notice we are losing power. We are losing power quite quickly. The supercapacitor is losing all its power, and you'll notice the ammunition box is also losing its ammo. So, once it's power, we're going to wait for it to go past the white line. Just keep in mind, I am holding down the mouse button this whole time. I'm holding down the mouse button, and you can see, I can no longer fire. Yep. The coil gun will fire once it has enough power, but at the moment, it does not have enough power. Meaning that whenever you try to fire, while you have insin uh, insufficient power, it will do the little, like, the little error sound, and it will show red in your bar to show you that you are out of power. Nice. That's the periscope solved. What about the railgun? Well, the railgun's a bit different. First of all, this is also sharing the supercapacitor. Uh, I mean, if we do that, no, okay, whatever. So you'll notice that the railgun is essentially the same. You have all your ammo on the bottom and your power bar. Now, the ammo on the bottom for the railgun is a bit different because these are each individual bullets. The bars on the bottom just mean, like, if the explosive inside is armed or not, or if there even is an explosive inside. So the green bar on the bottom of each railgun shell you do not need to concern yourself about unless you have explosives or try to have explosives inside your shells. Now if you look down at the power bar you might notice the white line is a bit uh, further away from the back of the rod and for good reason. You cannot hold your mouse button when you fire out of the railgun. It has a cooldown and it consumes a lot of power. And because it consumes so much power, once you go past the white line, you cannot fire again. So, meaning that this is a single-use, single-fire, not really single-use, but more of a single-fire, um, high-damage, low, high-damage, high-cooldown uh, weapon. This railguns are specifically designed uh, for large, um, hard enemies like Endworms, uh, Charybdis, and Molochs. Now, you might notice, I fired twice and only two of my shells are gone. Uh, like I said, the green bar represents if the explosives are armed or not. But two shells are gone. So if we go, and we click on the loader base, you'll notice two shells are gone. Quite indeed. And if we take out our railgun shell, you'll notice it does indeed have its C4 in it. So, let's put it back. And, uh, yeah. And one more thing, by the way, a little detail so that way you know when your railgun is ready to fire. Whenever you click, you'll see, you'll see like the middle of the turret, they're in the middle of a barrel, go inside of the base, and then slowly move back out. When it's moving, that's its cooldown. Once it's fully out, you can fire again. That is it for this tutorial. Uh, 
I just blew myself up with my railgun shell. So uh, make make sure make sure you're careful, kids. Uh, and don't blow yourselves up with railgun shells, or else this will happen. Uh, bye.